All right, guys, this is gonna be part two of how I got disowned. We're just gonna get straight into it. Sorry, I couldn't finish it in the other part of the video, um, but enjoy. I really hope I got every point, guys. I've literally just been sitting here and talking out of my ass. <laughs> so guilty i was so scared and then he drove off didn't see him for four years which is crazy i go up to my dorm i go up to tanya i was like we can't go home together because my dad was supposed to pick up both of us and i told her to just in case like just ask her parents to come as well because i don't know what's gonna happen with my dad so her parents were gonna come pick us up and bring us to toronto for a little bit um because i think it was like a long weekend or something so no one was gonna be there at school i basically tell her what happened i'm like crying does my nose look crooked guys sorry i'm so like particular about my nose but it's still swollen like i just got it done so ah. whatever we basically go back home to toronto but i'm staying at tanya's and i'm just getting so many phone calls my mom calls me she's like what are you doing like come back home you're being crazy and i hated my mom guys at the, like i at that time like i just genuinely didn't like her and i was like no i'm not coming back like my life is gonna be over if i come back and blah 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 oh also before actually right after this happened i texted my little brother and i was like you need to get my pass no, no i didn't have a passport at the time but you need to get my birth certificate you need to get all my documents and like this that like i made a list of things that i was like i need you to grab and i was like you need to hide that and put it put that in your bag or something because like i don't know what's gonna happen they're gonna throw my things out i was expecting them to um which did happen actually when my dad came home my older brother started throwing everything out throwing my clothes out and all that stuff i was like freaking out about that stuff so my little brother hid all my things he grabbed them came so clutch for me like king and he's actually the only person that i had really talked to in those four years of basically being estranged from my family this blush is not picking up on camera i'm using this kaleidos brush or blush in the shade there is no shade so i feel like i look so white right now but it's fine guys i lose my train of thought so fast like i forgot what i was literally talking about so my brother my brother grabs my stuff yes i'm in toronto i'm getting calls from my mom I went home, like by home I mean my dorm. My uncles were calling me. I'm like, I can't come back. You realize I'll have to drop out of school. Like I'll have to leave. I can't have this happen. You know, my mom was like, no, you can, I'll talk to him. You can keep going to school, whatever. And I'm like, you know, it's not gonna be that way. You know, it's gonna be bad. At this point, I kind of just figured, again, it's either I go back and basically trapped for the rest of my life, can't do anything. Like, I already felt trapped. So I was like, it's just gonna be on steroids, you know, it's gonna be so much worse. I'm just using this Patrick Ta palette, by the way, and I'm just putting like a little brown shade on my eyes just to add some color. So it's either I do that or I like live the rest of my life now, like on my own. And I thought that was like the only option, honestly. This happened so last minute and like, I didn't have money or anything and I had my job at Walmart still lined up for me so every time I would go home or if there was like a long weekend I would let my manager know and he would give me shifts uh, so that's exactly what I did for the winter break so this happened like beginning of November it was November 3rd actually I think it was November 3rd was that the Wednesday so I was essentially trying to find work in london i was working at walmart i was trying to get a bank loan because i needed to pay for my ten thousand dollar half of my tuition i was thinking i was like i could drop out of school or whatever if i couldn't afford to pay tuition next year like that was also an option i like will be in debt if i can't pay this half of my tuition and my residence fees it's it was due on december 2nd and so i got an extension to january 2nd so yeah that was like my whole side quest i was trying to figure out how i could pay for this and you know my friend's parents were trying to help me out to get a bank loan so they could co-sign a loan for me this one friend her name is kathleen shout out to you um and she knew that you know that's something that i would pay back like i would pay back i have so many people's parents but you know obviously i wasn't super close with them and like obviously co-signing alone is a very like big thing because you know if i don't pay it back then they're responsible for paying it back but i 
I knew in my heart, I was like, I will, like, obviously I would pay, pay you back. Uh, so one of my friend's parents actually agreed and he was confident, you know, that I would pay him back and I was so happy about it. Which shout out to him because when I'm rich, like I'm getting there guys. When I'm rich and balling, like I am blessing these families that have helped me out. Like I just, I can't wait to do it. It was such a long process. We still weren't able to get the loan and I was just freaking out. I was like, how am I gonna pay for anything? First of all, I'm gonna get kicked out of residence and I'm still going to have to pay the fees, you know? Like that's gonna be like on my record or whatever. I'm gonna get kicked out. I'm gonna have nowhere to live. Like I'm gonna be homeless, blah, blah, blah. Like I was looking into homeless shelters. Like I was freaking out. What had ended up happening is a family member of mine ended up helping me out in terms of paying the second half of my tuition, which I obviously had to pay her back for. In terms of everything else, I guess, uh, I applied for OSAP, which is like the student loan lending program, whatever. And I basically had written witness letters explaining like that my parents had kicked me out. And I did have to emphasize that it was because of religious reasons. I do feel like it played a part. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's just the culture, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I really had to milk the religious part for OSAP. It's essentially like my lifestyle is does not align with the culture or the religion. And for that reason is why I'm getting kicked out. Because of that reason, I basically just explained everything that happened. And I had people write witness letters. So my friend's parents, who kind of knew I was living a double life as well. They had already known because, you know, I would go to my friend's house and like change and whatever. I basically got approved to be an independent student, which essentially meant that my tuition was basically all paid for. I would get $7,000 in grants, which is money that I don't need to pay back and $7,000 in loans. So if I wasn't able to work during the school year, I could still comfortably, you know, pay rent. There was a group of girls that I found that I ended up living with. I would only be paying like $600 a month, which if you're working a minimum wage job, it's very easy to afford the $600. So I was like, I'll be fine. And I didn't really want to take out the loan. I didn't end up taking it out anyways. I also ended up working four jobs after I think in January, February is when I was really applying to jobs in London. I worked as a banquet server. I worked as a hostess, I worked as a tour guide for my school, and I worked at an escape room facility. I'm gonna use these lashes because they're just kind of cute. The only reason why I worked all those jobs was because it was all training shifts. I wasn't getting a lot of shifts or anything like that, and I was just really desperate to get money and make money. I would never go to class, by the way, because I was trying to work. And then COVID happened, oh my God, and I got laid off of all my jobs. I was just freaking out, like, bro, like the world is just against me right now. You can imagine how depressed I was, guys. Like, when, when I say I've been low, like I have been low, especially that December where I didn't have any money planned out for January 2nd to pay back my loan, I didn't have a job besides my Walmart job, which I would bust to in the winter, living in people's basements. I would just flock between houses. I lived at my cousin's for a little bit and then my uncle had found out that I was living there. Oh my God, story time about that. I was living with my cousin and then I was hiding in the closet because her dad came and that's like my dad's brother. And then he was literally looking for me in her apartment or something because he knew, because I think my aunt had told him and he found me in the closet like he literally opened the closet door and i was standing there and he couldn't even look at me in the eye like he looked so freaked out seeing me oh my goodness and then i had to leave her house and i went to live at someone else's house and i got super sick as well i don't know if it was covid but i was like really it was before like it was when covid started happening but before it was like announced as like this big thing in canada i was just like so sick i was sad i was crying every day like I felt empty is like the best way that I could describe it. This gut feeling inside me, I was like, I, I'm i gonna be fine. I'm gonna be so much more than this. I am at a very low point in my life right now, but it's just going to get so much better from here on out. I will be successful. Like I will laugh in my family's face and be like, look at me now. Like you thought I couldn't do it, but I did. And I was just so focused on that and that dream of being successful and being able to live on my own and putting myself through school, which fast forward now, look at me go. I got my own beautiful apartment. Like I got 
my nursing degree and everything. Oh, also, this was also the time that I decided I was gonna go into nursing and pursue that instead of psychology because I was like, what's like the most practical degree that I can have? Where did my lash glue go? Okay, pause, I need to go find my lash glue. <laughs> I found it. I can get a job as soon as I graduate and I can make my money up and I can, you know, get my own place. Like, it'll be fine, I'll do nursing. So there's a compressed program, which basically it's like the four year nursing program, but you can complete it in two years. So that's what I chose to pursue. I also wrote letters to the admissions department. I've been going through this and this in my life and this is what my grades look like. So that's why my grades are a little lower than whatever, which some of my grades were amazing. Like I had like a 98 in matrix algebra, like. <laughs> Actually, I had a 99, I lied. Some of my other grades were not like amazing, amazing. And I was like, it's because I'm working all these jobs and I'm just trying to make it through life. So if I did have that stability that I would be able to get higher grades and stuff like that. So I didn't actually get in that year, but I did get in the following year after. So I had to like retake some courses because I just did so bad. And I was like, there's no way I'm getting in or whatever. I ended up living in Brantford with this girl that I ended up becoming really close friends with. But then our entire friendship just broke apart, which... I have never done a story time on her and I don't know if I plan to out of respect for her. I don't even know if that it would be disrespectful at all. Like I'm just talking about my experiences, but I do have some regrets with that situation and like how I acted as well. We'll see. I'm too lazy to do my eyebrows right now. Like I feel like it's too much work. I was in Brantford for like two, three months. COVID happened. I was working at Walmart again. And then I ended up moving into a student house, which you guys, have, if you follow me on TikTok, you probably see me in there for a long time. I just moved out this year. I was able to save money. And then because I worked as like a banquet server, I guess, I applied to an actual serving job because banquet serving is not even close to actual serving. And I started working at this place, which I currently still do work at right now, which I'm planning on quitting, but just, you know, not, not quite yet. I'm gonna go in with this Marcel Forever Sharp Dark Brown liner um so yeah i started working as a server there i started making bank oh my god and i got a car my toyota corolla which i still drive it's so good on gas so shut the fuck up got a cat everything was going great and contact with my family i did give them my phone number like my dad asked me to change my phone number i ended up changing my phone number i had given it to him and he's like there's no reason for me to have this like i don't want to talk to you um and i was like oh well um whatever i forgot one of the most important parts so i had some beef with my older brother because i had found out that he had told my dad essentially so first year university i was living in a dorm right and i was supposed to move out into a house my dad didn't want me living with like renting out a house because he's like these girls can just bring boys in and you're going to be in a house with boys like you can't do anything about it because you're not the owner so he wanted to buy a house in my name my name and his name in london make the girls sign an agreement that it was no men were allowed in the house and it was to be girls strictly girls only my brother was really upset at the fact that i was essentially getting all this stuff a house in my name and i am doing all the sneaky stuff behind his back so someone so from my knowledge at that point was uh, which later on like four years later i found out some other things that kind of i guess changed the situation and didn't make it seem that bad for my older brother at the time basically someone had uh shown him pictures of me on tinder but it wasn't me like some other girl was using my photos and it was me in a bikini and he had seen that and he kept to him kept it to himself and he wasn't sure if he should talk to me or not so he thought it'd be a good idea to tell my dad but when my dad had told him that he was buying a house whatever my dad my brother's like oh like why are you doing all these things for her when she's doing all these things behind your back and then he basically told my dad about the photos and then that kind of set my dad off my dad had actually seen something prior to that as well i found out later he had seen this photo of me i had this friend in high school and we were all at the beach together and me and him took a photo together like we just took a photo and then two years later we took another beach photo together and we thought it was really funny because we're like oh my god before and after like us growing up after like two years or whatever he had posted one of those photos on his instagram and my dad saw those photos because someone sent it to him so thanks nick <laughs> um so anyways like my brother had told him about that and that's what like set my dad off because he was essentially like so someone else knows that my daughter dresses like that like this is not just you know me 
that knows now her brother knows my brother punched a hole in my wall or something and i was just laughing because i was like you literally were the one that told him and knew that this would happen and i just held a grudge with him for so long because i was like you're you're the reason why that this happened to me like this would have never happened if you had come up to me and been honest with me and been like there's these photos of you and you need to stop doing this or whatever i was just mad because i've heard so many things about my brother from our mutuals because some of the girls that he's talked to before no like know me they had basically told me you know he's he's asking us to like look at your instagram they also mentioned like oh yeah your brother hit on me before he talks like this at parties like he does this 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 and i was like holy shit he's doing all this stuff and i never said a word about it to my parents but like the minute that i do something suddenly like he is telling my parents so i just felt really betrayed and we never really had a strong relationship at all like we barely really had a conversation together ever in our lives after like i think i was in middle school oh let me take this off i'm getting a headache from wearing this we just had beef and then we were like cussing each other out and swearing at each other when i got kicked out and he had called me we did not leave it off on a very good note me like do my friend taught me this trick where you put your hair like this and you like shake it or you go like this but me and my little brother always stayed in touch I think there was actually at one point that my dad did reach out to me but i was just so scared of him at that point like i just i just didn't know what he was capable of doing like oh he's gonna kill me whatever like and my mom also like i kept in contact for a little bit but she would always like make me feel so guilty about leaving and she was saying how she was dying and she's getting sick and stuff like that and it made me feel very guilty but i tried to stay headstrong because i was like this is for the better i'm gonna actually do something with my life and honestly after getting kicked out and stuff like i became so career driven like i always used to care about boys and i mean i still obviously like I'm a girl, you know, I do like care about finding someone and stuff like that But my focus in life became less about going out and drinking and doing this and that and became more like, I need to make money. I need to be successful ever since then like I've just I personally feel like I've been leveling up in my life in every single way like, I feel more beautiful. I feel more successful i feel happier you know i have so much more love for my parents and appreciation for them than i did when i was living with them which is kind of weird right like i feel like i needed all of this to happen for me to be where i am in life right now because if i had gone back with my parents like i don't know what my life could have turned out it was a very shitty two years of my life after but the last two years because it's been four years have been absolutely amazing and i feel so blessed to be able to do what i do now it's crazy to me like i graduated Woo! this is my cap we've been two years together me ba you were with me for everything not for everything but mostly he doesn't like me i've done a lot of things again that i regret in my life in those two years but I grew from it and I think I'm a much better person than I was and that's all you can ask for. I don't want this video to be a video of like, yeah, go leave your parents. Like your life is gonna get so much better. If you have a gut feeling and you feel like something is for the best and you're in an unhealthy situation and a toxic situation, you feel that it's best for you to leave. I support that all the way. If you're like a child, I don't, I don't know like so there's there's a line obviously if there's like abuse and stuff going on and you're a child and you're living um in a situation where that's going on then like yeah speak out to the authorities like get help but if it's kind of just the case of you know my parents don't let me go out they kind of just force me to stay at home i would just wait and like hang on until you're 18 and you can you know apply for a credit card and start being in control a little, a little bit more of your life i would honestly just wait until you're a little older because even though i was 18 when this all happened i it was so hard like if something like this had happened right now in my life i would be fine but the fact that it happened so young and i was so unprepared it it's what made it so tough and just such a dark time in my life like don't this isn't just something you know that you do on a whim like i wouldn't recommend even though that's what happened to me like, it's really hard to do things as a child so like just wait it out till you're 18 um let me know if you guys have any questions down below in the comments i'm more than happy to make a video answering all your questions i can definitely make it a super long video because we're on youtube 
But yeah, at the end of the day, like there is nothing wrong with living life for yourself. I understand, you know, being a brown girl and stuff like that, or not a brown girl, I don't know what you would call me. I'm Afghan, but people get mad when I say I'm brown. People get mad when I say I'm Middle Eastern. Like, I just, I don't know what I am. Like, I understand coming from a strict background, all around this culture of, you know, you live for your family, you, you know, blood is thicker than water. Like you do everything for your family and that's what your life is for. But there is nothing wrong with living your life for yourself things will get better just put your mind to it there is hope and just don't give up family is not something that should be just given up you should still put your best foot forward in terms of your family if it is harming you then there's nothing wrong with living life for yourself and that is something that i have had to come to terms with because i've always been told i've been selfish for thinking that way obviously when i get older and i have kids i will sacrifice for my kids i will live my life for them yeah anyways thank you so much for watching please subscribe like the video give me a comment let me know if you have any more questions and i hope you guys have a great day